Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Spring Boot to create a list of people. As you can see on the left side, we're going to print a table. And then on the right side, we're going to take the same list of people and display it on a page in JSON format. My name is Shad Sluter, and this is part of a course about web development with Spring Boot using the Java programming language. Here is the index of the entire course. And so we're in part two right now, which is on the model view and controller. So we're still kind of getting into this, but we're going to show you some examples of how to handle data in a time leaf layout using the controller as our source of data. So in a previous video, we created a Hello World app, and then we created a more fancy Hello World app. And now we're going to go on to this part where we're going to put some data that is actually made out of objects. So some of the things that you're going to see added onto the project that we did in the previous tutorial are a few things here. We are going to continue working with this controller class we're going to add a model called a person, and then we're going to add some more pages that will be able to be formatted to print a table, and then finally with a REST service. So I'm going to pick up where we left off in the previous tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we created this Hello World controller, which has several events such as test one, test two, test three, pretty interesting ones, huh? We even have a test four. In addition to the controller, we had a page called Hello Page, which was a little bit of formatting to print some messages. We're going to create another page that's going to print some people and we're going to display them in a, in a formatted table. So if we're going to create some people, we need to create a person object. Let's create a place to put that. So in our project, we're going to define a new package. This package will be called uh, com shadsluter.models. Inside of the models package, let's create a new class and we'll call this thing person. So the general things that you usually do with a class, we're going to do here. We're going to give it some properties, then we're going to create a constructor, and then we're going to make a two-string method so we can print it. So let's create some properties. Um, it doesn't really matter which ones you do. I'm going to pick something that has some integers, some strings, and then maybe a float. So for this friends list that I'm going to make, I will call their name as a string property. I will use age as an integer, and let's say weight. We'll keep track of our friends weight using a float. So now the standard things to do in a Java class is, first of all, create all of the getters and setters. So instead of typing that ourselves, let's let the computer do it. So right click, choose source, generate getters and setters, and let's make sure that we select all of these items. So there are four properties and click OK. So then you see a whole bunch of uh, getters and setters. We're also going to need a constructor. So do the same, do a right click somewhere. And let's go down to source, choose generate a constructor using the fields and select all four of the properties and click OK again. Finally, we're going to be able to print a few things to the console using the two string method. So to create a two string method, you do right click, choose source. Once again, choose two string. Let's pick all the properties and click OK. So that's kind of nice to create all this code without having to type much. So we've got ourselves a person class. This is going to be the data type that we'll put into our table as well as into our JSON formatted output. Now let's prepare an event so that we can uh, show these people on a page. So I'm going to copy test two for my sample, copy and paste it at the bottom. And let's rename the get mapping from test two to uh, how about people? And then I'm going to rename the function. So the method is called show friends. And then uh, erase a bunch of stuff so I don't have to put so many things into the model, just to have one line there. And then finally, we're going to tell it which page is going to display our friends. So let's create a page and we'll invent the name right now. It's going to be called printfriends.html. So obviously that doesn't exist yet, but we'll create that in a moment. Inside of this function, we're going to create a list of people. So let's say we're going to list and then a angle bracket to say the type of this list is going to handle the person class. You can name the class or name the list, whatever you like. I'm going to call it friends. Now you could call it people. That might make sense as well. Now it's going to be a new array list and it'll be an array list of type people. Once you see this, you have a, a couple of underlines that need to be fixed. So first of all, let's try the import for the list. And you can see that we can import that from a, a Java utility class. Then after we've got the list imported, we can include the person class. So we'll do a import of the person. 
And then finally, array list. That has to be imported as well. So once we've imported all these things, all the red lines should go away. Let's go up to the top to make sure that they were imported correctly. So we've got a few things that were just imported here. I've got lists, array lists, and it looks like person. Okay, so it's time to actually create the lists. So let's make a friends.add function. So add somebody to the list. Now inside of the parentheses, we can just create a new instance of a person. So we'll say equals new person. And we need some attributes such as their ID, their name, and let's see, it was their age and their weight. So let's go with Alan for our first guy. Now I'm going to copy all, uh, all this line here and paste it a bunch of times. And then one by one, I will just update each new person as I add it. So let's go through the IDs, go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. That's probably enough. And then for the people, let's go with Alan, and then maybe uh, somebody that starts with the letter B. So let's go with Barry. A letter C, how about Carol? D sounds like Denise. Um, maybe Esther. So we got some names. Now let's go make up some data for their ages. Let's make Barry at 42 and then go on through the list. So some of them are younger, some are older, and let's make a variety of uh, weights. Now, when you type in the weights, you notice you always have to use the letter F at the end because when you do a literal number for a float, you have to tell it that uh, it's a float format. So F is the data format uh, indicator in Java. Now, finally, when we get done with all of these people, we will have a list of friends. So it looks like I have a, what, about five or six friends. Then I'm going to print them out. So using the toString method, this should work. I'm going to just do a system.out.println and then print the friends array or the list. Then finally, uh, we, we need to send this to our next page. So we can add to our model the attribute. Now I'm going to send the attribute name as people. You can use any kind of a name tag you like, but people here and I'm going to send it the friends list so to create this page I'm going over to the templates folder right clicking and choosing new file so I have to be careful I name this correctly because the controller is referencing print friends.html and F with a capital F now I'm going to put some data on the screen so that way I can at least find out if I'm on the right page or not testing out these controllers so let's make uh, just a paragraph that says friends page. No data to be shown yet here, but we will have something to test. Okay, let's see if everything works like we planned on. So I'm going to the title of the project, choosing run as and going to spring boot app. Okay, it looks like the app is running. So let's switch over to the browser. Okay, so here's the browser as I last ran it. So now let's put in local host and 8080. Notice it doesn't have anything available, so I think I used test1 and other things before. That seems to be working. So let's do a quick switch back into our code to see which uh, item we were trying to target. So there was a get mapping for the word people. Let's see if that works. So let's switch back into the browser and type in the word people and press enter. And it is saying that we're on the friends page. Okay, so now all we have to do is create this page so that it will handle a list of friends. So to build pages, um, you can either type them out yourself or I'm going to use a tool, it's free, it's online, it's called Layout It, and let's go to the Bootstrap Builder, and I think you'll see why I like it. So this uses the Bootstrap uh, CSS formatting system, which is pretty basic and very, very popular. I'm going to go to the grid system area and I'm going to take a 12 column container and put it on the screen. Then let's go to the base CSS and I'm looking for a title, so let's drag a title inside of there. And then I'm looking for a table. So the drag the table in underneath. And now I've got myself all of the HTML that I'm going to need for my page. Let's format it a little bit. So let's change the style. Do you like to have a striped table? Uh, you can decide if it's going to be hover or not. Hover is where you can see a little bit of a shadow. And then condensed. So let's leave it as wide. That seems to be pretty good to me. So I'm going to now choose the download button and I'm going to click download as a zip file. So my downloads uh, went somewhere. Let's uh, drag in the window. So here is my downloads folder on my computer and I have this layout item. So it says here we have a, we have a source folder 
and we have an index and all of these guys here. So let's take this index file and open it with some kind of a text editor. So I have a program on my computer called Sublime Text. You can use Notepad or whatever you want, but this is what we just got. So everything that we just coded is now nicely formatted in a simple HTML layout. So this is, this is what I'm after. So I have to do some window arranging to be able to see this alongside of my project. So let's minimize the browser and there's my project in the background. So I'm not going to need print friends like it was before. So let's just right click and delete it. And we're going to drag in the index file into its place. So I'm dragging index into templates and it says copy it. Yes, please copy it. Now let's go open open index and you can see the items here. It's the wrong name. We need to rename it, so let's do a right click and choose rename, and this thing is called Print Capital Friends. Okay, now we need to do a few CSS files. If you look inside of the contents, you're going to see that on line 13 and 14, it's making a reference to CSS files. We don't have any of those. They are stored in the static folder, so we're going to switch back into the downloads, and I'm going to select JS, Fonts, and CS, CSS, all three of those. I'm simply going to drag them to the static folder, and it says copy them, please. And now I have CSS, which includes a bunch of bootstrap. I have some fonts that were downloaded, and then also some JavaScript. So all the files that I need for standard bootstrap are installed on my computer. Now, does Print Friends actually work? So it's a static page, and we're going to make it dynamic in just a minute. But let's test it out. Let's, instead of the title H3, I'm going to say, I'm going to say these are some of my friends. Okay, so now we have something to look at. Let's go ahead and run the app again. Okay, so we got this thing running. Let's go ahead and go back to the browser. This was the friends page. Now if I refresh it, I should get a new friends page. So very nice. I have the formatted table. It doesn't contain the data we need, so we need to delete whatever placeholder data is there and replace it with our own. So let's go back into the design here and replace some of these. So let's put in the titles of our properties. So I'm going down into the table section and targeting the table headers, so TH. So the header is the properties of my person class. So ID, name, age, and weight. That seems to make sense. Now let's go down into the table body area, and I'm going to save only one table row, so that's the TR section. All the rest of them are placeholder values, so we can delete those. We're going to dynamically generate them now, so that way we can use the items that came from our model. So now to make this a dynamic page, we need to go and put in a statement inside of the first TR tag. So we're going to insert before the end bracket the words TH for time leaf. And then we're going to have a colon each. So this is a for each loop that we're trying to create. And then we have an equal sign and in the brackets we tell it what the two variables are in our for each loop. First of all, the variable counter we're going to use P. That stands for person. And it is part of the list of people. So people is the name of the attribute that came through in the model. So this means for each person, P, in the list of people. So now for each of the table uh, data points or each column we're going to add some more time leaf. So in the first TD tag we're going to insert TH colon text. So this is a text property that we're expecting and we have to grab it from a property of the P variable. So it's equal to dollar sign curly bracket P dot and then ID. Now ID is a property of the person class. So if we spell this with a capital I or a lowercase i, it does make a difference. It has to match the property of the class. Then the next one is going to be the uh, name and then the age and then finally the weight. Now you notice I'm leaving the uh, actual text that was in the placeholder. So this is the default text as you can see where it says 1 and TB monthly and the date that's just placeholder text, and if the model for some reason fails, then this will appear. However, I should not see these default data anymore. We're supposed to get all of the data from the objects that we passed to the model. 
looks to me like I put in quotation marks, or I should have put quotation marks in instead of these curly brackets. So a syntax error. Now I purposely did that, right? <laughs> you can see that it's really easy to make a mistake using this language. Let's see if that helped. So I'm going to go back and refresh this page. And this time, very nice. We have all of the data that we stuck in here. So we got Alan, Barry, Carol, Dennis, or Denise, and Esther. Now I promised you at the beginning of this video that we're going to make not only the person list that you see on the left, but also the rest service item on the right with JSON data. So let's save this JSON data for the next video. Looks like uh, we're running long on this time. So come back again and we'll make another method that will display this formatted text.